Many thanks for giving me this opportunity and I'm going to present the impact of sustainable land management on water security in the case of Ethiopia. As you can see on the background picture, Ethiopia is endowed with rich natural capital including biodiversity. However, the rational utilization is challenged by high population growth, subsistence agriculture, high level of uh, poverty. Right now, uh, we are about 105 million people and about 85% are dependent on subsistence agriculture that applies huge pressure on the landscape. Driven by high population growth, poverty and very poor land management, uh, land degradation mainly by water erosion becomes a high challenge or a big challenge and affects both the natural capital and the livelihoods. Of course, all this eroded sediment from the highlands ended up in rivers and streams, as you can see the color during the rainy season. So the flow contains the fertile soils, including fertilizers, nutrients, and uh, water itself. It also affects uh, uh, water storage structures, both for irrigation, water supply, and hydropower. And that means a reduction in hydropower energy as Ethiopia uh, depends largely on hydropower uh, energy generation. This is a very serious challenge. Uh, of course, it affects also our freshwater lakes and biodiversity. While the previous one is in the highland areas, in the lowland areas, rainfall, extreme drought, and flood are major challenges. Areas with poor natural resource management are vulnerable to recurrent droughts, as you can see in the picture. On the lower side, flooding is largely associated to poorly managed upstream areas. The same areas can be affected by recurrent drought at times and in another time by flood. Uh, so this is uh, one of the water security issues facing in Ethiopia, mainly in the lowland areas. Well, the fight against land degradation in Ethiopia starts as early 80s. There were some pockets of success, however, the success has not been equivalent to that of the efforts and investments because there are gaps in approach planning, technological intervention, and in generating the required scientific evidence to convince uh, or to create awareness and also to assess impacts. To demonstrate this, we established learning watersheds in the Upper Blue Nile Basin by Basin. The learning watersheds were designed to address three major purposes. One is to demonstrate the right integrated watershed management approach to demonstrate, second, how the right approach can be improved, uh, can, can improve environmental quality and livelihood, and of course, to use the sites as live learning platforms for policymakers, uh, land users, uh, practitioners, and researchers, and to generate the required scientific evidence for uh, public domain. We develop a conceptual framework for our learning watershed, as you can see it. The immediate purpose of uh, integrated watershed management is to ensure sustainable and rat rational utilization of the natural space. And the second purpose, immediate purpose, is to address land degradation challenge. When you address uh, the land degradation challenge, you actually build a natural source capital and when you enhance rational utilization of the resource, you actually address the land degradation or prevent land degradation. And that means you also address climate change adaptation and mitigation. The overall uh, goal of watershed management uh, is to improve environmental quality and ecosystem services, improve livelihoods, and of course, create resilience. 
resilient livelihood or communities and the environment allows to invest on watershed management or rational utilization of the resource in general. This is the conceptual framework and principle we follow for our learning watersheds. Some results from our learning watershed. As you can see, this is one of our learning watershed called Debreaco. The baseline situation shows you a serious land degradation, and this is mainly caused by overgrazing and poor management. This is supposed to be the communal grazing land in the area. Of course, after four years, the same area is converted into such productive lands after we apply the right technologies. Communities adapt uh, zero grazing through cut and carry system in general. Of course, in the learning watershed, one of the strategies we follow to convince a farmer is to, to make soil and water conservation physical structures and to convert them into cash bands by planting important cash crops, fruits, and forage, as you can see. Another strategy we follow to build the confidence of the farmer is we convert the barren homesteads into a, a well productive horticultural uh, areas. And this again allows the farmer to get more income, build also his confidence, her confidence to invest in watershed management outside his and her home. This is just a simple example of one, water, one uh, household in a watershed. In 2012, and as you can see on the right side, upper right side, we help the household to plant uh, cash crops, fruit trees. And in 2015, after four years, you could see uh, most of the planted materials grown very well. This was, of course, supported with uh, shallow wells fitted with uh, rope washer pumps. It's very simple because water is the most important component. And of course, as you can see on the right bottom side, after five years, the farmers, uh, they start harvesting their own fruits. Homestead development empowers women and improves household nutrition. That's why we push it as one major component of our watershed development efforts. We also observe change, like in this one, biomass is changed. On the left one, uh, you could see uh, stream uh, base flow extends to the dry season. When we start, it was completely dry. In general, in all our learning watershed, we notice that erosion is reduced, conflict minimized, biomass improved, productivity uh, increased, base flow improved, groundwater raised, and the poor start owning uh, water wells. While we also generate more scientific evidence through REACH, as you can see, REACH has three observatories in Ethiopia. One is uh, to show how water security uh, enhances sustaining growth in our ash basin, where uh, there are a lot of activities going on in our ash basin. Industries, commercial farms, large uh, mega cities are uh, their competing demand for water is serious. And then the lower part, we also uh, try to check uh, how small town pathways to water security is uh, identified. And the middle one, we focus how sustainable land management affects water security in general. I'm just going to tell you a few results on the SLM part. Uh, as you can see in the list, we have about six major research activities going on on the SLM observatory. And I'm going to show you a couple of results on number one, number five. On number one, it is institutional soil moisture dynamics and availability. Uh, number five is uh, impact on shallow groundwater recharge. Oh, most of the studies are conducted in collaboration with external institutions such as IFPRI, IRC, Addis Ababa University, and Center for Development and Environment. 
The in-situ moisture dynamics monitoring shows that uh, plotus with conservation structure has a better uh, soil moisture holding capacity than the one without moisture, uh, soil and water conservation structures. As you can see on the right side, the deeper you go, the moisture availability with, with uh, plotus with conservation structures high compared to the one without, as you can see the yellow uh, line shows you the plot without conservation structure. So that shows you SLM enhances reach out to the groundwater. Second result is linked to well, shallow well ownership uh, by wells category. Uh, as you can see, uh, the upper one is Bagarima, one of our learning watershed, and the lower one is Devere Yaakov. Uh, as you can see in the middle with a uh, red circle, in Abagarima, 56% of the pool starts having wells after we start managing the watershed. And in the lower one, 83% of the pool starts having wells after we start managing the, the, ma the watershed. And we ask why, because uh, SLM actually recharges the groundwater and um, Digging shallow wells becomes less expensive by the poor farmers. That's why they, they, they get more access. This is also a proof that shows that SLM can actually improve water security for the poor. The research also uh, identifies additional side result um, and shows that 93% of sampled wells are contaminated by E. coli bacteria. And when we designed uh, our learning watershed, our focus was mainly to enhance water availability, that is more quantity, and water quality was not part of the design. So this is a big lesson for us. In conclusion, our result shows that if you follow the right planning approach, participatory, uh, choose the right technology with the right mix, and combined with better capacity building and awareness creation, uh, it is actually uh, possible to address land degradation challenge very quickly and improve livelihood and ecosystem services. This is it. Thank you very much.